Hello everyone and welcome back. I know it's been a while, but hey, life gets in the way and sadly I haven't been able to make any more videos, but I'm pretty sure I'll be back to my weekly uploads. But I've been noticing that a lot of people have been discussing the possibility of an aquatic expansion coming to Jurassic World Evolution 2. This all stems from the tweet that Frontier has posted of the Biosyn and Malta expansion wallpapers. In addition to those two pictures, there was also a Mosasaurus picture and a goat picture. Now, the goat picture I really don't think is actually teasing a sort of DLC, but the Mosasaurus picture, people have been saying it is teasing something. Lots of people have been saying that the Mosasaurus being next to the Malta and Biosyn in expansion wallpapers means that they are teasing an aquatic expansion that would probably coincide with that live stream that they said that would happen on August 9th with a special announcement. I do think that that will be a DLC announcement or a DLC presentation. Now there are many things that the lagoons need to be improved upon. One thing that desperately needs to be improved upon are attractions for the lagoons as right now I'd rather choose dinosaurs and flying reptiles over aquatic reptiles as they are not that interesting. So adding some sort of attractions or special gimmick for them would make them feel more unique give the player more incentive to utilize them in their parks. Some marine tours could be a good way to solve this, as we would be able to get up close and personal for our marine reptiles and finally be able to see them. The river cruise could finally be added in this uh, hypothetical DLC, as this would serve very well in the use of lagoons and land-based enclosures. Another thing that I've noticed specifically that people have been wanting for lagoons are dividers for lagoons, creating a huge lagoon but being able to divide it in different sections so our marine reptiles won't get in the way of each other. And I do think that is a good idea as it would allow more marine reptiles to be in one single enclosure but still be divided into different sections. As we've recently seen the addition of the viewing dome and viewing log, underwater viewing galleries could be a perfect way to look at our marine reptiles from a distance, but this could also include tunnels. These underwater viewing tunnels could be reminiscent how aquariums allow guests to walk in underwater tunnels and see different animals in their enclosures. Another type of thing that I've seen a mod for specifically are viewing glass, which would make these things look like actual aquariums, and this would be a very good idea and able to give us more customization for our lagoons. I also believe that this expansion could come and give us the ability to be able to create our own natural lagoons. Natural lagoons shouldn't just be limited to one specific map. I think that we should be able to create them in any map, anywhere, and this would make a lot of people happy as a lot of people really do like the natural lagoons, even though the map that they are present in does hold them back. Overall, I definitely think the lagoons would benefit a lot from these types of new attractions. An aquatic expansion definitely needs some new species, but the problem with our current uh, aquatic reptiles are that they're all very similar. The major problem is that we have four plesiosaurs, Adamborosaurus, Elasmosaurus, Plesiosaurus, and then Styxosaurus. But we definitely need more variety in our aquatic reptiles. This expansion could finally bring that to the table and finally make our lagoons feel more diverse. When the game first began, they said they had no plans in adding non-aquatic reptiles to the game. But they also said that about feathers, so I don't really know. And they've also added two non-dinosaurs, the Dimetrodon and the Lystrosaurus. Starting off with actual aquatic reptiles, I feel like Shonisaurus would actually be a really good pick as it would finally bring more variety to our ichthyosaur. I'm pretty sure it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, ichthyosaur. Dacosaurus is also another one I hear people talking about. Being a smaller mosasaur, I think this dinosaur would add a lot of variety to our pre-existing mosasaurids, similar to how the shonisaurus would add a larger counterpart to the smaller ichthyosaur. But moving on to more, I guess, controversial picks, I would definitely consider the megalodon and the gliostis to be added into this expansion. The megalodon is the most twisted aquatic animal to be added into this game. It would be very unique as it would resemble a huge prehistoric shark. The Dunkleostis is another very unique looking species. Being a prehistoric and ugly looking fish, I feel like this would be very unique when compared to everything else in this game. Ammonite and Archelon are also two other species that people would love to see. As I don't think we have currently any herbivorous aquatic animals, Archelon would definitely be able to fill this niche. Archelon is also a very unique looking animal being one of the largest if not the largest turtle to ever live. Ammonites are another species that could be added in this DLC. Ammonites are a very unique looking group of mollusk animals. Ammonites can grow to various different sizes, from extremely small to extremely huge. They also used to be food during prehistoric times. Basilosaurus was a prehistoric whale that would be amazing to see in this game. These animals would be very unique as we currently don't have anything like them. Being whales, these guys would be very unique looking in both model and sound effects as we could add vocalization to both of these. The Leviathan was also a whale. Being basically a carnivorous a sperm whale, it was a very large creature and would hunt and sometimes even interact with the Megalodon. Being the inspiration for Moby Dick, I think that this animal would be a very good addition to the game and could even go toe to toe with the Megalodon. 
So more unique looking animals would be the Camaroceros and the Jacolopterus. The Camaroceros was a large orthoconic cephalopod. It was a very unique looking animal and it kind of resembles a squid with an extremely long shell. Jacolopterus, also known as Eupteripterids, people usually call them sea scorpions, which I do definitely see the resemblance. These things would be very unique, but I don't know if people would be very happy about seeing a large squid or a large sea scorpion, but I would definitely wouldn't be against it. Zephactinus is another type of fish that could be added to this game. It would be similar to Dentheosis, but of course with more exaggerated teeth. It would also be very unique if we were to be added by itself, but I definitely do think the Dunkleosis would be chosen over the Zephactinus. Now, although this is an aquatic expansion, I definitely think that semi-aquatic animals could be added. Sarcosuchus or Dinosuchus could definitely be added into this expansion, as these two animals are known to be both living in water and out of water. This could cause restrictions with our current limitations of this game. With Dinosuchus already being a part of the Indominus Rex DNA, I definitely think it should at least be included in this game. As we've spoken about Megalodon, it would be a disgrace to not talk about two other prehistoric sharks, Cetacanthus and Helicoprion. The Helicoprion is usually known as the buzzsaw shark, as its mouth kind of resembles a buzzsaw, and this would definitely be extremely unique. The Cetacanthus was also a very unique looking shark. Many people also call this the anvil shark due to the top of its head resembling an anvil. Both of these are very unique looking prehistoric sharks, and I think it was, they would make great additions to our lagoon. But I definitely think that the Megalodon would be chosen over these two. Now, I would like to hear your thoughts. What four species would you pick? Are there any that I haven't mentioned yet? Please let me know down in the comments. We also would require decorations for our new and expanded lagoons. On top of that, new paintbrushes could be added to our terrain editing tools to make our lagoons even more vibrant. Being able to have paintbrushes of coral, algae, kelp, or seagrass would be amazing. And it's kind of a disgrace that the Jurassic World Evolution 2 loading screen has a Mosasaurus swinging past kelp, yet we're not able to do that in game. I definitely do think that this should definitely be added at some point whether or not we get an aquatic DLC or not. New feeders could also definitely be added. The live shark feeder could be added and, and as well as shrimp and ammonite feeders as our animals don't only just eat fish. As I mentioned before, ammonite was something that prehistoric reptiles definitely did eat when they were alive. Shrimp is also a very common beast for aquatic animals so I think this would also be a very good feeder. Now here comes one of the problems that I have with this potential TLC occurring. As I have seen before, new skins are something that always appear in expansions. The Biosyn expansion had a lot of different skins. Feathered T-Rex skin, the Biosyn Giganotosaurus skin, Dreadnought skin. The Malta expansion also had skins for the Atrociraptors, Oviraptor, and more. But the problem with this is I don't know where Jurassic World Evolution 2 could derive its skins from. Jurassic World Evolution 2 could grab one single skin for the Tylosaurus from Jurassic Park the game, and they could also grab more skins from Jurassic World the game, but I don't know if they would be able to do that. They could also get some from Jurassic Park Park Builder, like for the Chronosaurus, but in reality, there's not a lot of skins to choose from or that would even be able to be added into this game. But I do think that this expansion could definitely come with an amazing free update. With our expanded lagoons, I definitely think we should be able to have our already pre-existing aquatic reptiles to come with expanded behaviors. Social interactions between different species or between the same species could be added and would bring more liveliness to our marine reptiles. Breaching and coming up for air as they currently don't do this as their real life counterparts did when they were alive would make our marine reptiles feel more alive and bring that level of realism to the game. They could also be seeing lying and sleeping on the seafloor to make them feel even more real as they don't even sleep in this game which is a major problem. If found uncomfortable could try to beach themselves to kill themselves in addition to also trying to bash against the lagoons as they usually do when they are uncomfortable. If uncomfortable also they could try to attack lagoon attractions like the underwater tunnels and submarine tour. Another thing I definitely think aquatic reptiles should be able to do is to be able to attack humans and dinosaurs if they are close enough to the lagoon, similar to how the mosasaurs jumped out of the lagoon and dragged down the Indominus Rex to the lagoon. Aquatic reptiles should also be able to jump up and kill flying reptiles and helicopters if they are uncomfortable and drag them down to the lagoons, similar to how we saw the Tyranodon get killed and dragged down by the mosasaurs in Jurassic World. I definitely do think this DLC has a lot of potential, and I feel like Frontier could come up with amazing things and solve the issues that I've brought up in this video. But I can't wait for August 9th and see what they have in store. Maybe we won't get an aquatic expansion. Maybe we will see finally a Manticorp expansion. I don't know, maybe people are reaching with this theory. But who knows? We'll find out in a few days. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.